Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, this one's gonna be a little bit more complicated than usual. We're gonna be showing how to make relocatable binaries on macOS. I previously showed this in a video for Linux uh, where we used RPath to do this. Uh, there is a concept of RPath on macOS, but it doesn't quite work the same as it does on Linux. And so we're gonna be using a different mechanism to make relocatable binaries. Uh, we're actually going to use exactly the same code sample as before to simplify the problem a little bit. So I'm going to go to the code samples, which live on GitHub, for those of you that don't know. Uh, and they are <laughs> viewer submitted. Thank you, Parsit, for sending all these in. Uh, but we're going to grab the same code that we did for the last one and walk through that same example. And I, I know it looks like Linux here, but oops, curl-o not see this. I know this looks like Linux. I am actually SSH'd into a MacBook Pro to take a look at this. So, uh, you know, we are on a Mac OS. Uh, we're actually on ARM 64 as well. So uh, it shouldn't matter for this demo, but I'm on ARM. Okay, so this is the file that we're dealing with today. Uh, it's very similar to, well, it's exactly the same as the one we showed before. We're going to be using a library called libsass, which is a C++ uh, SCSS compiler. And we're going to be making a small binary that sets up a compiler and compiles this little bit of SAS code and does some you know, math expression in here. And in order to do that, we need to install libsass. I'm going to do that with brew. Brew install libsass. My typo this is libass all the time. <laughs> but it's not relevant here, but I think it's funny. Okay, and then we need to compile this binary. Now, normally you would just do gcc lsas t.c o main, and that would build your binary. Uh, but the brew paths on ARM machines aren't on the C path or lib path by default. So we need to add a few other arguments here. The first is the C path, capital I, uh, brew prefix libsas slash include. This will get the C headers available to gcc. Well, it's actually clang, but uh, and then we need to tell it the library path as well. We'll do that same brew prefix libsass slash lib, uh, and so this will this will allow it to know okay where are the headers and where are the libraries we need to link against. And if we run that now, we should get our binary out. And if we run it slash main, and yes, the the keyboard is lagging because the other computer is on Wi-Fi. <laughs> uh, you'll see that it's able to do that math there. It's able to do two times two. We've got a we've got a SAS compiler. Cool, all right, we've built our binary. However, our binary is not relocatable. Uh, before we ran LDD on this to show what was linked against it, I have LDD as an alias here to the macOS equivalent, which is otool capital L. Uh, otool is kind of a generic object sort of tool for uh, Mac O binaries, Mac O binaries, I don't, I don't know the pronunciation. I've never heard it out loud while I read it. M-A-C-H dash O. Uh, but anyway, you can see our executable main is linked against two different things. One of those is opt homebrew opt libsass lib libsass one dot dialib, which is the uh, dynamic library, the shared object that we installed from homebrew. The other thing it's linked against is libsystem dot b, which uh, hmm, how do I explain this? This is a system library that's provided by the operating system, and if we actually run ls on it you'll see that it doesn't exist. And I don't completely understand this part, so I'm fully admitting that I don't completely understand the system. As far as I can tell, the dynamic linker on macOS sort of magics a bunch of libraries into existence. Uh, libsystem B being the one that's kind of always, uh, are always present on executables. There's also implementations of like SQLite libraries, of um, there's even an SSL library. There's a whole bunch of like out-of-the-box libraries that you would normally expect as part of an operating system. And those may show up in this OTool output, but they're not actually there. They're kind of magicked into existing. And again, I don't completely understand those. Okay, but anyway, we have our executable now and it works as long as we have uh, this libsass installed at this particular location. You'll notice that this is a full path here. And if we actually look at the exact uh, instructions in this executable with little l, um, you'll see that the full path to this shared object is encoded in the binary. 
This means that if you were on a different system that happened to have a libsas onedilib but it wasn't in exactly the same spot, your executable is not going to work at all. Even if it's in like user lib where you would normally expect to be able to dump shared objects. Uh, the dynamic linker uh, always uses full paths on, on macOS. And I don't completely know why, but I'm going to show you a way around it today. Uh, just to show you what would happen if we didn't have libsas installed, I'm actually going to brew uninstall libsas. <clears throat> And then we'll run our executable again, and you'll see that it crashes. You know, it was not able to load load this exact path because that's that's what's encoded into the binary. Um, and you know, it gives you this abort trap six, which if you've worked on macOS a lot, you'll probably see this a few times for this library not loaded dial d uh, error message. Anyway, let's bring that back. Brew install libsas and. But we're still working. Okay, so I haven't showed you anything interesting yet. I've mostly just showed you. I built a binary. It's linked against the thing. Here's how you can kind of inspect it. Uh, now let's get to the interesting part, which is I want to make this relocatable. I want people to be able to download a zip, run this executable, and not worry about whether they have, you know, libsas or whatever else installed on their system. And to do that, we are going to do a similar approach to what we did for the R path, but we need a few different commands, uh, mostly because of the way dild uh, dynamically links things. All right, let's start by making a lib directory. This is similar to last time. We are going to copy this uh, shared object into the lib directory. Now note shared objects on macOS. Some of them are .so, some of them are .dilib. I believe they're the same. Uh, <laughs> but again, I don't know completely. They both act like shared objects. Uh, so we're going to start by copying it into this lib directory. Now let's actually see if that links anything itself, because uh, that'll, that'll make this more complicated. Uh, it links itself, which is a little bit weird. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so sometimes I've noticed that Otil will show that it links itself. It doesn't actually do that, but it reports it that way. It links. It also links libc++1, which if we ls... Oh, okay, here's another example of a, a, a library that's sort of magicked into place. Uh, this is part of the linker itself, part of the uh, Mac OS um, API. And so these, you know, these are both fake. <laughs> and it links itself. That's a little bit weird. Uh, we'll fix that in a second. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is actually tell this that it's been relocated and give it a new name. Because right now it thinks it's still at this location, even though it's not. And to do that, we're going to use a tool called install name tool. And I have the command over here because it is a bit of a complicated one. Uh, and we need to tell this uh, shared object that it has a new ID. And we do that by doing dash ID and then giving it this thing, loader path slash libsas.1.dilib. Uh, this is the same name as the actual file itself. And this special loader path is something that we'll get to later. This is kind of the magic equivalent to our path on, um, on Mac OS. Then we need to pass the file into it as well. When we run this, uh, we actually get a warning here. Warning, changes being made to the file will invalidate the code signature. And <laughs> this, is, uh, this is actually a problem if you're running in SIP mode, system integrity protection, which I believe is the default. Uh, the, the dynamic linker will refuse to load this binary because its signature has been invalidated. And that's kind of a little bit of a security feature. Now we can work around this by giving it a signature, and there is a special signature that's considered the ad hoc signature, which I don't know why this is allowed because it seems to subvert the entire signing process, but you can do this, and that is to use the code sign tool to force sign dash. Dash is what's called the ad hoc signature. It's kind of like a no op special placeholder signature that works, but anyone can sign for it. Uh, and we're going to re-sign this file. And you'll see it says replacing existing signature. Uh, that was because it, you know, we invalidated the signature here, so we need to re-sign it here. Now you could sign this with an actual signing token. I don't know how to do that, but you could probably figure it out. <laughs> okay, so now that we've moved, or we've copied this uh, libsas into a place, we now want to make our main executable refer to it. Because if you look at it, it is still linking this one down here, and we want to link relative to this loader path into our little lib directory here. And the way we're going to do that is also with the install name tool. Install name tool. Uh, but we're going to use the change uh, argument to it. And we basically have to tell it, no, don't look here anymore. We're going to look in a new place now. So we have to say, change it from this to loader path 
Uh, and loader path is going to refer to the directory that contains the executable. So main is currently in our working directory. And relative to that, we need to look at lib slash lib sass dot, uh, dot one dot dilib. So this is kind of the relative path, similar to what we did with our path, to the actual shared object that we want here. And then we need to tell it that we're doing that to main. Uh, cool. Now let's look at otool-l on main again to see what it looks like. Ooh, cool. Okay, so we have it. We have uh, updated this to now look at at loader path lib lib sass dot one dot dilib. Actually, look at what we did to this as well. Yeah, we've actually we fixed its self reference too. Nice. Wasn't an intended thing, but cool that we did that. All right, cool. So now if we run our executable, it should be using our relative path. And it should still work, and it does. You can see we're still doing our math here. Just to confirm that it still works, I'm going to brew uninstall libsys. That way, it's definitely not on my computer except in this lib directory. And you'll see it still works. Cool. Uh, but that's kind of the procedure that you would use to make a binary relocatable. Now, uh, one thing I didn't show is sometimes these libraries will have dependencies themselves, and so you'll kind of have to recursively do this process and pull in you know, their, their tree of dynamic libraries rather than just the one that I did here. I happened to get lucky with something that uh, only depended on special system libraries other than, other than itself, so it made it a little bit easier. Uh, but basically, now what you could do is you could zip up this, this main executable and this lib directory and send it to any Mac OS that's at the version you compiled for or newer. Uh, you can kind of see this 1200 or 1311. These are the Mac OS API versions. Generally, generally, you can compile for a major minor version if it's a 10.x release. So like 10.6 will work on 10.7 and above, or 10.6 and above. Uh, or if you're on Mac OS 11 and above, they've now switched to major versions for API compatibility. So uh, if you build on Mac OS 11, it'll work on any Mac OS 11, 12, 13, et cetera system. Um, but yeah, that's how you can build relocatable uh, binaries. Hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.